I'm Devin Mogler, IRFA's president. It's my pleasure to welcome Governor Kim Reynolds back to the Iowa Renewable Fuel Summit. She has been here several times, but never at a time with so much as riding on the future of the renewable fuels industry. Governor Reynolds has been a relentless champion for renewable fuels and has always gone above and beyond the call of duty for Iowa's rural communities. The governor recently proposed legislation in Iowa to promote consumer choice for higher blends, specifically E15 and B20. And Governor Reynolds is leading a bipartisan coalition of Midwestern governors working to ensure year-round E15 remains readily available for retailers and consumers. Please join me in welcoming Governor Reynolds to the 2020 Iowa Renewable Fuel Summit. Good morning. Good to see all of you. Thanks, Devin, for that uh, kind introduction. And it really is a pleasure uh, to be with you. And I want to just thank the Iowa Renewable Fuels Association for all that they do to promote this really critical uh, industry. And I'll just start by saying how proud I am to be the governor of the number one ethanol and biodiesel producing state in the country. Uh, renewable fuel fuels account more than $4 billion of Iowa's GDP and supports tens of thousands of jobs in our state. And whether they work within it or not, I am here to tell you that Iowans value the industry with a staggering 85% saying ethanol is critical to our state's economy. Ethanol and biodiesel power Iowa's economy and they fuel the world. Iowans may appreciate, as indicated, this reality, but that doesn't mean that our leaders in Washington do. Far from it. And nobody knows better than you that nothing comes easy for farmers and the biofuels industry. Nobody knows better than you that to be heard, respected, and appreciated by federal agencies, we have to fight. And that is exactly what we're going to continue to do. Time and again, the EPA, under both parties, has walked away from its commitment to renewable fuels, and we've had to bring them back. Well, we need to do it again. The administration has focused, as you've heard this morning, and as you already know, all of its efforts on electric vehicles actively attempting to eliminate gas-powered cars. And that's a mistake, especially as China works to lock up the precious metals that make the EV batteries. Rather than support a communist economy thousands of miles away, we should be supporting our own economy. We need to continue to embrace an all of the above approach where we support energy sources that come from right here in Iowa that have the capacity to scale today. In my condition of the state, I was proud to announce a brand new biofuels bill. It doubles the biodiesel production tax credit to incentivize production in Iowa. It increases fuel retailer tax credits to expand consumer access to higher biodiesel blends using a market-based approach. The bill makes improvements to the renewable fuels infrastructure program and my budget doubles the funding to $10 million a year for the next five years. We're also proposing to update the biodiesel fuel tax deferential to incentivize higher blends and put more dollars into the road use tax fund while remaining revenue neutral overall. Codifies the 2019 executive order that all diesel engine vehicles in the state fleet must be compatible with higher blends of biodiesel. And finally, under the bill, any newly installed or upgraded fuel infrastructure must be E85 or B20 compatible, and all retailers with compatible infrastructure must offer E15 by 2026. I, yeah, I think we could. 
Iowans deserve access to less expensive, cleaner burning fuel that's grown and made right here at home. And we're going to fight for our farmers and a renewable fuel industry. And with your help, I truly believe that we're going to get it done. I officially filed the biofuels bill last week. It has a study bill, House Study Bill 594. And as we speak, just a few blocks east of us in our beautiful capital, our lawmakers are reviewing it, I believe, with a subcommittee uh, this today. So now is the time to call or visit your legislature and make your voice heard. Let's together remind them how important it is that we finally send a message to D that D.C. can't ignore. America's energy is growing right here in Iowa's fields. Passing the biofuels bill is the single biggest step that we can take to support our renewable fuels industry and the crops that make them, but it's far from the only thing that we need to do. We can also lay the foundation for Iowa to become a global leader in carbon sequestration, creating another value-added market for farmers, and continue, continue to fight arbitrary and illegal regulatory actions taken by the EPA. Of course, federal responsiveness would be welcome, but the ag industry knows better than anyone how unreliable it can actually be. So again, it is why it is so important that we continue that fight, but we continue to do everything that we can to control our own destiny. Fortunately, uh, our great state has what it needs to thrive. And namely, I am here to tell you, it is the people of Iowa. As I said in my condition of the state address, if policymakers would just continue to put our faith in Iowans, I can guarantee you without hesitation, they will come through. At the beginning of the decade, uh, in a condition of the state, I laid out a bold vision that was rooted in really this well-founded faith in the people of Iowa. While the pandemic and a couple derechos and droughts and floods delayed it, it didn't derail those efforts. In the last eight months alone, I am so proud to say that we've invested over 300 million in broadband, lowered the property tax burden while strengthening mental health funding. We've made our community safer by supporting our law enforcement, encouraged more quality housing. We created over 9,000 childcare openings, openings. We extended and expanded our water quality efforts, and we repealed the inheritance tax on our families. And even after historic tax cuts and historic investments, the storms, the droughts, and a worldwide pandemic, we still ended last year with a $1.24 billion surplus and over a billion dollars in cash reserves. So that's pretty good. You know, we've kept our spending down. But it also means that despite the 2018 tax cuts, we are still over collecting on Iowa taxpayers and Iowans are paying too much. There has never been a better time for bold yet practical tax reform that meets the priorities of our state, it allows Iowans to keep more of what they earn, and it creates a highly competitive tax system. And the bill that I filed does just that. First, it sets one income tax rate of 4%, flat and fair, these cuts will occur gradually and responsibly over the next four years so that we protect priorities like education, public safety, uh, water quality. Starting next year, for Iowans who have worked all their lives and saved for retirement, the bill eliminates taxation on, of retirement income. For most retired Iowans, that's a well-deserved full income tax repeal. For farmers that are 55 and older who farmed at least 10 years and retired, it allows an option to eliminate the tax on cash rent or crop shares for all the years that the income is earned. And for employees who receive stock in their company for years of hard work, it allows one lifetime election to eliminate the tax on the, sh on the sale of those shares when they retire. This incentivizes employers to share ownership with their employees, and truly it sends a message to the rest of the country. Hey, come to Iowa. We're open for, invest, for business. Invest here, see that investment grow, and, you re, and when you retire, we're not gonna tax it. 
And what I'm really proud of is that all of the tax cuts that I just walked through, they have one thing in common. They reward work. And that's... <laughs> That has never been more important as the country faces an unprecedented worker shortage, one that's challenging ne nearly every business sector in our state, and agriculture is no different. So while Iowa is better positioned than most states across the country, we have the ninth highest uh, labor participation rate in the country, we are still down from where we were prior to 2020. But I am proud to say that we have a solid foundation to build on, and we need to do everything we can to, to maintain that momentum. And that's why I'm establishing a separate reemployment division whose sole focus will be helping Iowans get back to work. It, it provides one-on-one -on -one career coaching that starts in week one, where that wasn't even being started until week five. It eliminates unnecessary licensing uh, requirements, lowers unemployment benefits from over six months, where they currently are, to four months. And in this time that we're in right now with unprecedented labor shortages, that is realistic and where it should be. And it ensures that those collecting unemployment can't turn down suitable jobs. We're also expanding apprenticeships and work-based learning. We're continuing to increase access to housing uh, and child care. So as I wrap up here, um, I just want to just say that from biofuels to taxes to workforce to educational choice and transparency for parents, Iowa, we truly have a historic opportunity before us. If we follow through, I believe there is no limit to what we can achieve. People will be drawn to Iowa for countless reasons, for freedom and opportunity, because we reward work and we value personal responsibility. But above all, they're gonna be drawn to Iowa because every single day, we put our faith in Iowans and Iowans always, always come through. God bless you. Thanks for all you do. Let's go out there and get that bill passed and keep this industry moving forward. God bless you.